Match is a big sequencing effort. We're starting out with 3,000 patients sequencing. Um, we are looking at somewhere between 20 and 30 drugs or drug combinations that will be in the trial. So we're really trying to find signals across these tumors. What are the drivers and what are the issues around uh, various types of cancers? For the NCI match, we decided to look at signal finding because we do know that there are some drugs that are already approved and some drugs that are under study that are addressing drivers of particular cancers. An example of that is um, BRAF, V600E inhibitors of bemorafenib or um, trametinib in V600E mutated melanomas. Okay, but do we know whether other tumors with that same mutation would also get a good response to that drug? So that's what MATCH is looking at. It does rely on levels of evidence to match the mutation with the drug. Um, it will accept any patients with solid tumors or lymphomas after they've had standard treatment and still progressed if there's standard treatment available for that tumor. So one of the other things we're hoping to get in MATCH actually, which is apropos of the rare diseases, is to get something, um, get some hints of some of the rare diseases that might have drivers that might have responses to these agents that are in MATCH. And then we have the exceptional responders, which is a study and uh, clinicians can send in information on patients they think have had an exceptional response to some type of systemic treatment, some type of uh, chemotherapy or even alternative therapy if such you know, if that happens to be an exceptional response. And if, uh, so that, that initial information comes in without any uh, patient identifiers, if a group of uh, experts, which is biologists and molecular um, specialists and cancer specialists, you know, look over the literature and they believe this is also an exceptional response, the patient has to have some tumor from before that response occurred, and then we will do some cancer genome-like sequencing on that with whole exome sequencing, mRNA-seq, and Foundation Medicine has joined us with their deep sequencing panel of over 300 genes. We, what we're hoping to find from that is, um, is there a plausible reason why that patient would have responded to that particular treatment? Not so much be to help that patient, so to speak, because they've already got their exceptional response, but can we use that to either develop drugs better or um, better choose patients for similar kinds of treatments in the future. One of the surprising things about that is, is that most of our exceptional responders are still living. Um, and we, since most of these are uh, metastatic tumors, we didn't expect that. So I think we're gonna learn a few things by, by doing that. Um. So we, uh, we defined it as a patient who responds to a drug in which that response is expected 10% or less of the time, or that lasted longer than three times the median that's been reported. So if it's standard treatment, and let's say, just take for an example, somebody with pancreas cancer, they got standard treatment, and they're alive five or six years later, we consider that an exceptional response, even though maybe more than 10% of patients would be expected to respond to the regimen, they wouldn't be expected to live, you know, to stay in that response for four or five years. So it's, it's similar to that. Likewise, if they got an investigational agent and that agent was being tested in, in let's say, colon cancer and it didn't make the cut, in other words, they didn't find enough responders to go ahead and, and continue to develop that agent there, but this patient has an exceptional response, we would consider that. Um, something that we should delve into and sequence if possible.